one of the things that the franchise world has been able to capture and execute with a high level of excellence is the ability to execute the brand systems of product, service, image consistently across multiple units, across multiple states, and even multiple countries in a very successful way. Now, that's one part of the franchise business. The other part has to do with the implementation and execution of the business management system that franchisees do in the organization every day. And one of the biggest complaints that I have heard from franchise clients is why do my people not do what I'm asking them to do? And obviously if it's brand systems, it's because maybe they're not being properly trained on those systems that the franchisor provides that allow them to train them and then execute those systems. And we need to have proper follow-up. Now, on the other side, there are systems that are the business systems that the franchisee needs to develop. And that's a whole all the different kind of challenge. To be able to ensure consistent execution across both the brand systems and your business management systems, there are five steps that you need to follow to be able to do it the best way possible. If you follow these five steps, you will be able to achieve consistency in a multi-unit organization and have this process to follow up to make sure if it's not happening, which step along the way is not being executed the right way. So in this show, I want to share with you what are those five steps or five elements that need to be in place for you to be able to achieve consistent execution across your multiple units successfully and consistently across your organization. So let's go ahead and start with the first element, the first step that has to happen. And that is that you need to have clear definition of what it is that you want the employees to do. Remember, the franchisor gives you that clarity because there's certain clear processes and procedures that the product or the service that you provide have to have. And so they provide that. But in the systems that you have to create, you need to clearly define what are those systems. Every employee in the front line and management staff, they need to have a precise understanding of what it is that are the organizational goals, what are the standards, what are the expectations, and ideally the detailed step-by-step on how to execute those standards and those expectations so that they know what it is that they need to do. So to be able to implement this, you need to think of, okay, what are specific operational goals or administrative goals that you want to accomplish? You know, And in there, think of what are your values and what are the processes that you want them to execute so that it meets not only your business requirements, but also the culture that you're trying to provide so that not only are you able to give a good product and service based on the brand systems, but also you are able to maximize you know, the cost control and the revenue and the growth that you want in your organization for your business and for the people. And so not only do you need to define what are the step-by-step procedures, but also what are the objectives, what are the goals and the why of these procedures? Because the more that you are able to share the why of these procedures, the more that people are going to be able to embrace them and want to follow them exactly the way they're supposed to be. So that's the first thing. Define what are the processes and procedures that you want them to execute so that they can do it successfully because they have clarity. The second step is to properly document those procedures. So you once you define them, now you need to document them, like literally put them in a document, a manual, a management manual, job aids, forms, somewhere where the people can actually review them, use them to train them, be able to use them as a reference so that if there's ever any confusion or a question, they can always go back to that. Those documentations is, you know, become the roadmap of the execution of the task that you want them to do. You know, they eliminate the guesswork, they reduce the errors and they ensure that the operations that you want, the standards and the execution that you want is clear to them. So there is no question. If it's in black and white paper, there would not be any question, right? So create comprehensive guides, you know, manuals, templates, forms, documents that they can refer to physically so that that way, as you go and document those step-by-step, they can actually refer to it. They should be easily accessible in a way that either is in a manual, physical, manual somewhere in this in the unit or easily accessible online so that they can quickly look at it and then follow those procedures exactly the way you want them to be done. Now, this third step is 
you know, once you have defined it and then you have documented them, now the next step is to train your people. Just because you define them and document them does not mean that the people know them, right? It just means that you have them. Now the next step is to make sure that the people are properly trained in this procedure so that you can achieve a level of confidence and competency among your staff and leaders in the organization to follow all of the standards. To do that, you need to have a well-designed training program. Like what is a training program or the process that you're going to go through with each team member in each position to ensure not only that they're trained, but that they say, yes, I understand. Yes, I'm trained. Yes, I feel confident and capable of doing the job. That's going to be very, very important. Now, how you do that, obviously, you're going to be having a blend of, you know, documents or maybe videos or maybe on the job training. If you use a variety of methods, you know, remember, people learn different ways. So people prefer to learn in different ways. Some people like to read more. Some people like to do more. Some people like to, you know, actually uh, listen more. And so if you incorporate the different methods of training, you will then be including everybody's preference along the way. And so as you do that, as you're designing your training process, make sure that you do that through, you know, and then you do workshops, you might do online courses, you might do hands-on demonstra demonstrations on all the skills that you want your people to know and execute consistently across the organization. If you have a very robust quality training, the likelihood of achieving that consistency of execution across your units go up tremendously. Now, the next step is now, now that you have defined them, you have documented them, you have trained the team, now you got to delegate the tasks. You know, if you clearly delegate to them and have it clear, what is their responsibilities within this task? What it is that they're responsible for, that they will be held accountable for, that there's no overlapping on responsibilities unless they're doing the same job, obviously, right? But if there is clarity on what it is that they're responsible for, now you can delegate to them properly what the job is because they already know what it is, they've been trained, and they should be ready to go. Now, delegation doesn't mean that you don't, you know, follow up, right? That will be the next step. But before I do that, when you're doing delegation, it is important that you have clear definition of what people are responsible for. Here's where job descriptions come in, responsibilities or routines by position so that there is zero possibility of confusion as to what they're responsible for. That's what delegation or proper delegation looks like. As I mentioned, just because you're delegating, it doesn't mean that you're not going to follow up. It's not a set it and forget it. If you want consistent execution of any task, you must have relentless follow-up. That is really the ultimate job once something is being delegated. You need to make sure that you are regularly following up and critically maintaining accountability of the tasks. You know, don't just let things go because if you let things go, then people think, oh, maybe it's not that important. If it's not important to them, then I guess it's not so important to me. It's so critical that you address any issues as immediate as possible, redirect in a soft manner, of course, unless it becomes a habit. But if you do that, if you do immediate follow-up, redirect, the possibility of them correcting behavior and being in alignment with your, your expectations are becomes much, much higher. As a leader that has to follow up, it's important that you establish a routine of regular checkups. What are the things that you're going to be checking in every day? What are the things that you're going to be checking out every week or every month? As a leader, you need to have those routines so that that follow-up is done effectively, is done immediately, is done appropriate, depending on the level of challenge that is happening. And why not use technology? As you know, Nowadays, we are attached to phones and calendars and ways to follow up. So use the technology to help you do proper follow-up in your organization. You know, accountability, we all need accountability. I need accountability. And the reason for it is because we are humans and sometimes we forget, sometimes we slack a little bit on or relax in our standards. And so having that accountability and then follow-up, it really helps to transform our good intentions into great results. You know, and when you are following up, what you're doing is you really are just helping be a reminder of what needs to be done and helping people, you know, achieving really what they want to achieve. Follow-up is really a way to help people be the best that they can be, that they want to be. And so don't think of a follow-up as being an ag, but really as a way to help people remember what are the things that they need to do to continue to be great all the time. If you follow these five steps of execution, then you're going to be able to achieve high level of operational excellence, which then will lead to great customer service. The employees will be more engaged. You're going to be able to achieve financial performance and go 
goals that you want to do, as well as create a strong foundation on how to scale your business successfully. Because if you are able to implement these systems of consistent execution, you will be able to continue to grow your business, whether it's just increasing revenue or increasing the number of units that you have in a way that will produce consistent results across the organization. However, these elements are not static. Things change. The things that you're executing change. You know, people change. The generations change. So you need to always adjust and see how can you better adjust as to what are the systems you need to doc define? What are the things that you need to document? How to document them better? How to delegate them? How to train people? All those things might need to be readjusted from time to time to be the best that they can be for the people that you have, for the systems that you have right now. So just be flexible on that and know that if you do this successfully, you will have excellent, consistent execution of your business and brand systems across your organization. Now, if you'd like to learn how you can achieve consistent execution, what are the systems that you need to put in place? So how to do all these things that I tell you about? I would like to invite you to explore our training and development programs here at the American Franchise Academy. We have training programs for unit managers, for district managers and for developing multi-unit franchisees. So if you'd like to learn more about how we can support you in all this journey, please visit us at www American Franchise Academy and explore our programs that we have developed to help franchisees achieve the highest potential. Thank you and we'll see you in the next show. Bye-bye.